As you've probably heard, Spider-Man stopped the crime boss Hammerhead's thugs from robbing the Museum of Contemporary Art. Good for him, right? Wrong! They nearly demolished the place and everything in it! They were shooting rocket launchers indoors! See, even if you assume good intentions, which I do not, this is the problem with Spider-Man. He escalates every situation into an apocalyptic disaster. What good is it to save the art from being stolen if you blow it up? Now, I realize this is pretentious navel-gazing modern art. Soup cans and ink splatters that look like they were splashed on by a drunk elephant. But I'm not an art critic. I just know what I don't like. And I do not like that web menace trashing our public spaces! Youngsters won't recall, but there was an earlier black cat, a criminal from the old school. And of course, like everything else these days, they had to reboot it with a woman. Now, no one loves women more than J. Jonah Jameson. <laughs> uh, in a respectful, non-harassing way, of course. I just think this new black cat is a bad example for our young ladies. The original stole and took his chances. He didn't try to convince us he could be a good guy like this Jezebel did, remember? She ran around playing the crime fighter until it became clear she was stealing from the very crooks she arrested, which proves the point I always make. A black cat cannot change its spots. I know they don't have spots, but you get my meaning. Wait, 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 wait. Jared tells me black leopards do have spots. You just can't see them. I was right after all! Ha! Those look like explosives. I should check in with the bomb squad. My loyal listeners have called in reports of Spider-Man recklessly vandalizing public works, smashing open power relay boxes and other structures relating to important public and private services. Some have even said it appears he's looking for something, but he never leaves with anything. My friends, I think it might be time to consider that Spider-Man might just be a few sprinkles short of a Sunday. Not that dressing up like a bug and swinging around the city is the behavior of a well-adjusted individual, but now, either he's looking for things that aren't there, meaning he's delusional, or he's venting uncontrollable rage. And either one of those possibilities means it's time to call the man in the white coats with big butterfly nets. That's still a thing, right, Jared? What do you mean it never was? I'm running late for a sales call. Keep doing your heroes. If you followed my career, and of course you have, you know I notched my first big bylines covering the Magia crime family. The media's declared them dead more than once, but not unlike cockroaches, they always come back, just like they're doing now. I hear people make excuses for them. They're not so bad. They follow rules, unlike the demons or the cartels. <laughs> and that's true. Until they go to war with each other, then bullets fly, cars explode, horses lose their heads. And my Jonah sense tells me there's a gang war brewing. So hold on to your cannolis, folks. Come on, Jared, that's not an ethnic slur. I like cannolis. Guess who's confirmed to be back in town? That feline felon, the black cat. Seems she led Spider-Man on a merry chase before getting away. Ever notice how that happens a lot with him and her? Funny how he can hold on to a dinosaur man, or a human rhino with no problem, but a mere slip of a girl gives him so much trouble. Look, it's not that long ago when I was a young man myself, I get it. 
a nice set of gams, a shapely derriere, a few batted eyelashes, and a hormone-addled youth can easily get hornswoggled, which is exactly why Spider-Man has no business handling this. Leave it to the professionals. We have lady police officers now. Maybe this is a chance for them to prove they're as good as men, which, uh, I have no doubt about, but there are less forward-thinking people out there. The Majin, a syndicate of crime families, symbols of a bygone era. Don Fortunato, Don Cicero, Don Macchio, just to name a few. And of course, that metal-domed lunatic Hammerhead. Criminals, but ones who follow a code. Better than most, right? Wrong! They toss their code out the window the second it's inconvenient, because a criminal is a criminal, and they are by definition cowards, lowlifes, and scum. I brought down the Magia virtually single-handed in the 80s and early 90s, and let me tell you right now, I stand ready to do it again. I am not afraid of them. Not one bit. You want me? Come and get me. That's all the time we have. Jared, go start the car. No, I'm the boss, and I say you do it. Oh, stop crying. The internet's rife with footage of Spider-Man chasing the black cat across the rooftops. And apparently, there are hordes of young people cheering them on. They're called shippers. No, that has nothing to do with boats. It's short for relationship. As in, they really want Spider-Man and the Black Cat to be together romantically. Or they really don't. And they have quite intense arguments about it. Flame wars, I believe, is the term. You know, in my day, we didn't have time for flame wars about shipping. You know why? Because we had jobs! So here's J. Jonah Jameson's public service announcement to our youth. You're into shipping? Join the Navy! Bar fights are nothing new in this town. But the one that cleared out the Blackwing Tavern wasn't just your typical beer-fueled brawl. That particular establishment has, let's say, alleged ties to the Magia. And guess who was right smack in the middle of it? Spider-Man and the Black Cat. At this point, I think it's fair to ask, who is on whose side here? Are Spider-Man and the Cat working for rival Magia families? Or the same one? Or... And remember, I always think ten steps ahead. Are they starting their own family? Huh? 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 It would explain a lot about why Spider-Man, who clearly has no respect for the law, takes down criminals. Less competition for him and his gun maul floozy. We might just have Bonnie and Clyde in spandex on our hands. Another day, another piece of priceless New York architecture destroyed by none other than Spider-Man, the webbed wonder. Was the Harlem Sanitarium in the best condition? No. Did the doctors there at one point commit horrible atrocities against their patients? Probably. Does that mean we should let spandex-suited vigilantes swing willy-nilly through a piece of our history? I think not. It is our duty. Nay, our responsibility to maintain these shameful monuments to our past, because that's the America that I call home. Like I said to my doctor when she recently told me to calm down, I won't, and I'll tell you why. I'm certain the police could have handled whatever petty argument was going down at the sanitarium without the destructive force of the webhead's wacky weapons. What say you, New York? We're going to talk about a hot-button issue today, folks, and that's crime boss Hammerhead. Turns out that petty argument at the Harlem Sanitarium was actually a Magia smackdown against this black-topped fluff. But here's the thing about Hammerhead, valued listeners. 
He might be an unhinged, rampaging cop killer who my assistant Jared keeps calling a beta for reasons that I'm certain must be shark-related, but he has some interesting ideas. What's so wrong with pining for the good old days? Hammerhead wants to bring New York back to a time where people didn't get offended by everything, and spiders were just bugs you killed in your apartment, and I didn't have to take blood pressure medication! Now. If we could just stop him from destroying the city and its citizens in the process, wow, that would be great! First of all, I'd just like to make it clear that I am perfectly capable of uh, running this show alone and absolutely know how to work this computer by myself. Shut it, Jared, I'm getting to it. But you, loyal listeners, should know that I choose not to. I'm getting to it. And that's why I have decided of my own accord, that's enough, Jared, to bring my assistant, Jared, back to the Just the Facts with J. Jonah Jameson operation. And to apologize to him on the air, which is what I'm doing now, right now, and are you serious? Are you really doing this right now, you little? <sighs> and to give him a raise. Tune back in soon for more Just the Facts with J. Jonah Jameson. Today on Just the Facts with J. Jonah Jameson, the Magia are turning the streets of Manhattan into a gang war. Why, you ask? Because. Nobody listened to me when they had the chance! If we just cleaned up the city, returned to our collective senses, and run Spider-Man out of town, not necessarily in that order, then a psychopathic crime boss wouldn't be wrecking New York in some misguided pursuit of that same goal. Look, Hammerhead's impulse to take us back to a simpler time before any of us had heard of web shooters isn't wrong, but his methods are obscene, attacking the police, terrifying citizens, the man gives simpler times a bad name. Like this infernal sodium-free beverage I'm being forced by the medical establishment to drink for my health gives soda a bad name. And meanwhile, where's our city's so-called savior, Spider-Man, in all this? I need to lay down. Friends, our streets are safer than ever before. Thanks to the tireless efforts of the swinging spectacle, Spider-Man. Oh, just kidding! Our streets are actually in more literal danger than they've ever been because it seems like someone made Hammerhead's idiot men resort to digging up roads in the middle of rush hour! It's clear that the only way crime boss Hammerhead thinks he can get people to listen to his pleas for a return to decency is by actually raising this city to the ground. And while I frankly find the sentiment admirable, just like my doctor thinks it's admirable that I've cut back on alcohol consumption, I think we can all agree that we'd much rather get home on time and alive than late and dead. Meanwhile, Spider-Man, it seems, is actively assisting the Magia during all this. Spider-Man! or Spider-Mob. You decide. Now, typically, I don't like to trash talk other... Who put this note here? What's a content creator? That means nothing, Jared. Those are two meaningless words that put together make one meaningless phrase, Jared. What I'm trying to say, listeners, is that I don't speak ill of other extremely famous and influential New Yorkers like myself. But we need to get one thing straight. Screwball is a menace to this city, just barely surpassed by Spider-Man himself. Do they hand channels out to just anybody these days? This purple-haired punk is allowed to run rampant online, and if she isn't kept in line, she's going to cause a total societal collapse. I can't tell you what to do, fine listeners, and I would never suggest you do anything borderline illegal. 
But if Screwball's channel just so happened to be shut down and she was never able to broadcast again, I think that would be a fine way to protect your city. Finer than anything Spider-Man's ever bothered to do for us. Well, folks, it seems I have a retraction to make. Some of my previous comments about finding Hammerhead's ideas interesting, because he wants to make this beautiful city respectable again, may have been taken out of context. Hammerhead is a violent and poorly dressed murderer who, it turns out, has actually been stealing superpowered weapons in order to rule this city by force in a sort of coup d'etat that I'm certain no one could have seen coming. Especially, apparently, Spider-Man. Now I stand behind everything I said about admiring Hammerhead's motivations. Kids these days need to put down their smartphones and stop their floss dancing and get jobs like the rest of us did at eight years old to learn some responsibility. And I think we can all agree that his methods belong in the trash can and weapons should stay out of discussions about decency. All I have to say is that none of this would have happened. Spider-Man had just stayed off the streets in the first place. I don't know how exactly, but I know it's true. And now I'm going to bed. Loyal listeners, I've been told I need to lower my blood pressure by several points if I plan on making it to the next decade. And I'll tell you what. I can't! Not so long as the Scarlet Swinger is still sweeping through our streets. He wants us to believe he's here for the good of the city. That he saves lives. That he's a champion of the innocent. Well, who was he championing today when he let an anti-Magia witness disappear in broad daylight? This could have been the one person vital to getting Hammerhead arrested. Now, you know, I'm all for some reform in this town. So there are a few things on the Stuff J. Jonah Jameson hates list higher than witness tampering. Right behind Spider-Man, there it is, witness tampering. But Spider-Man let Hammerhead get away with it. And here we are. And here I'll stay at a solid 140 over 95 until someone puts this menace behind bars where he belongs. Now. Spider-Man is a failure. You might think this would make me happy, and to some extent, you'd be absolutely right. But today, I am tired. Tired of all the senseless violence continually afflicting our streets, which that mass menace failed to put an end to. He failed to stop Hammerhead and his men, who are now using stolen Sable International weaponry to wreak more havoc than ever. And speaking of Sable, Miss Abuse of Power herself is back in New York, this time aboard some kind of fancy schmancy gunship. Where was that when the city was cowering under the terror inflicted by Martin Lee and Otto Octavius, huh? Collecting dust in a Simcarian warehouse? It's a shame she and Spider-Man couldn't have done us all a favor and just taken each other out. talk more about this live streaming egomaniac screwball. It's bad enough her show features and glorifies that narcissistic webhead Spider-Man, but her <laughs> shows, if you can even call them that, are putting hard-working New Yorkers in harm's way just so she can gain followers, whatever that means. Can't you see her ridiculous stunts are nothing more than a desperate ploy for attention? Come on, folks, you're smarter than that. By watching her shows, you're literally hurting yourselves. So, you ask, what should we do instead, Jonah? Here's an idea. Tune into my show instead. The only thing I'll hurt you with is the truth. Damn, that's a good line. Write that one down, Jared. Let's use it in the next promo.
turns out traditional media isn't dead quite yet. <laughs> Not that any of my listeners ever had a doubt. They're used to getting world-class content on a regular basis. But I'm, of course, talking about Screwball and her live-streaming band of bandits finally getting yanked off the air. Or the web. Whatever. The point is, we can all once again rest easy knowing we don't have to live in constant crippling fear of the awful sound of a so-called internet personality spewing nonsensical acronyms into the ethernet. Internet. Whatever. How is this for a meme, screwball? Goodbye. What do you mean that's not a meme? Of course it is. I just made it one. I said I wanted crush dice, not... What do you mean we're live? Oh. Ha <laughs> ha! Listeners, brush heads, stop me if you heard this one before. Spider-Man just chased a bunch of thugs through the streets, putting citizens in danger, and leaving millions in property damage in his wake. And this time, he had a little help from a certain silver-haired vigilante who turned the financial district into her own personal shooting gallery with a flying death machine! But that's not the worst of it, folks. Oh, no. What could be worse, you ask? The traffic! The gridlock! It was so bad that yours truly missed a very important dental appointment. Now I have to wait six months for the next opening. How many other people miss dental appointments because of this? Dozens? Hundreds? Thousands? Which, of course, leads us to the obvious conclusion. Spider-Man causes tooth decay! Reports are flying in about an incident in Midtown involving, you guessed it, Spider-Man. It's the same old story, same old menace. But here's a terrifying little wrinkle. My sources tell me that the Maji of Crime Boss Hammerhead is now gone, and I quote, full cyborg. First we have robotic octopuses, and now a mecked up Magia? Ugh, whatever happened to the good old days when criminals would just put on a dime store mask stick their finger in their pocket and try to rob a bank. All right, Spider-Man happened. This is it, folks. This is the big one. <laughs> I finally have proof. For years, I have asked my dear listeners to send in photographic evidence to prove once and for all that Spider-Man is directly linked to the very criminals who plague our city. And finally, finally, one brave anonymous caller has delivered the goods. We have clear photos of Spider-Man standing in the immediate vicinity of caches of humanitarian aid. Aid that was intended for Simkari. And our heroic caller assures me that these very humanitarian caches are being sold on the black market. If I've learned one thing in my years as a world-renowned reporter, it's this. Photos don't lie. Spider-Man has been caught red-handed. No pun intended, puns are for whips. So what do we do about it, you ask? We wait. We wait for the police to finally wake up and arrest this mass lunatic. At long last, this city is going to finally see that Jameson has been right about Spider-Man this entire time. Not only is he a thief, he's actually stealing vital food and medicine from innocent civilians who are trapped in a war zone. Women and children struggling to survive, hiding each day from a hail of mortars and bullets. Meanwhile, Spider-Man is stealing the very aid that might keep them alive. This is a new low, people. Even I could never have suspected Spider-Man of something this despicable. All we can do now as a city is to sit back and quietly reflect on just how right J. Jonah Jameson really was. Yet again. Is 
Today is a fine day in New York City. At long last, Hammerhead has been taken down for good. Cyborg parts and all. I will even give Spider-Man and Silver Sable an ounce of credit. They did, after all, land the final blow. However, while the mainstream media trips over itself to heap lavish praise on these vigilantes, allow me to give you a dose of facts. Hammerhead would have never gotten this far had it not been for Silver Sable leaving behind all her gear in the city. And don't get me started on Spider-Man stoking the fires of a gang war and forcing a decorated police captain into administrative leave. So sure, they cleaned up the mess, but they were also the ones that made it. Jared! Call my doctor and double all my prescriptions! I'm in the red here, folks. Eyewitnesses have confirmed that there is no longer just one Spider-Man, but two of them! I mean, one is bad enough, but I'm having a hard time dealing with the idea of multiple menaces swinging through our beautiful city! It's just... It's just... Jared, I might be having a heart attack. I need to lie down, folks. No, don't call an ambulance! It's too expensive! Call a cab! I have a coupon in my wallet! Don't go in my wallet, Jared! I'll do it! I'll do it! <laughs> 